but wanted to discuss glaciers today. Uh, more specifically, I wanted to talk about glacial moraines. Uh, you know, when I fly people around, I tell them about glaciers and moraines and stuff like that. Uh, but I've never actually shown anybody that has uh, not been flying with me. So um, there is a uh, there's something that happens to glaciers when they travel down, and what happens is they start to pick up debris from underneath the glacier. And depending on what kind of a moraine it is, and a, a moraine, if you can see this glacier right in front of me, this is near Whittier. Uh, you can see some dark streaks, and those streaks are debris that is picked up, or plucked is what it's called, uh, from the underlying material, and it's traveled down, and there are different kinds of moraines. Uh, you can see the, where the two glaciers come together, there's a streak or a strip of debris, and that is called a medial moraine, and that is formed by two lateral moraines. So a medial moraine is in the center of a glacier that is caused by when two glaciers come together. And so it's two lateral moraines that form one medial moraine. And then you can see over here on the right, uh, you've got lateral moraines over here that haven't joined with any other glacier and they're just simply lateral moraines. And what happens is that that debris is eventually deposited at the end of the glacier and those are called terminal moraines which I'll talk about in a little bit and you can see over here kind of probably in, in the front of the camera here uh, is a lateral moraine that's forming the medial moraine of this glacier and it's just dragging all these big huge rocks and boulders and all the, the sand and all that with it and as it travels down and carries that stuff with it. So you can see some big huge boulders in there and those are called erratics and those uh, may end up getting deposited somewhere very uh, like unusual like it won't be typical for the area and they might be out in the middle of a field or something and you'll see this big huge glacier or a boulder and that's called an erratic which is dropped or deposited by the glacial moraine and some of these are like thousands of years old these moraines and I'll do another pass by this one because this is kind of interesting and so all this glacial debris is carried down and eventually it has to go somewhere and it is deposited at the end and that's the name terminal moraine so that glacier in front, over on the left you can see a ridge, and that ridge is a lateral moraine that you can see how it's built up, and it's kind of, it just looks out of place from the, the surrounding material, um, and that's debris from a, a lateral moraine. And then right where it, it ends, the glacier ends, is where all of that is being deposited now, and so it's, it's making those hills. I've heard that glacial moraine material is very, uh, very fertile. And if you can see this in front, there's a ridge there. And a lot of these mountains are scarred. And I, you know, I'm no expert on this stuff. I'm just learning this stuff. But you can see this kind of a, a ridge that runs the length of this. And that may be its own glacial moraine that's been overgrown. It's like millennia years old thousands of years old so there's one glacier in front of us again that's not very long but it used to go down to the water which is this right here so it's almost sea level let's say it's 2,000 feet I'm at 2,500 so that makes sense uh, but over here on the left uh, you can see it's that lateral moraine and you know as it makes that sweeping bend it just is pushing all that debris up onto the side there and you can see these streaks in this rock and I would like to believe that that is actually glacial caused from glacial movement across those and you can see on this glacier uh, the the terminal moraine right
right in front of us. That is that has been deposited there for a long time because it's just a huge pile of stuff. And then you've got these. The glacier itself has receded all the way up here to the top. So this is a glacier that is feeding into the Harriman Fjord. And you can see the uh, glacial, the lateral moraine over on the left here. And it's deposited the debris over on the left side. And you can see the water uh, kind of spitting it out into the sound or into the fjord. And so it's carrying all you know, all sorts of that debris, different sizes, like gra gravel size, uh, those uh, erratics that I mentioned, those big, huge boulders, all the way down to the, uh, like, it's called rock powder or rock flour, which is just like it sounds. It's a very powdery substance that is made from the pulverization of the debris under the crushing weight and uh, friction of the glacier. And I've actually heard that the rock flower has some properties to it that's good for like mud masks and stuff. And you can see the, the differing size of debris down there. I can see the size of the boulders from up here all the way down to the, uh, the sand-like or flower-like substance. So this is the top of the Colony Glacier, and we're going to be going into the Kinnick area, uh, but I'm going to stay up high. Usually I'm down low, and we're looking at everything down low, but I'm going to stay up high so we can see this stuff. Uh, there's a story about uh, in 1952, there was a, a military aircraft with 52 on board, and it actually went down up here somewhere, and they couldn't get to it. And so it just went untouched for nearly 60 years. And they started seeing the debris deposit down into the lake. I think you can see it from here. And it's 14 miles from here to there. And so it took 60 years to go from here to there. But that's, the, that's how slow these glaciers go. And then you can see how these moraines are formed up here. Now this is the top of the glacier, so everything pretty much starts here, and it snows and it compacts and uh, it forms ice, and then it just layer on layer on layer on that, and then the gravity just moves it down really slow, and that is what dredges up and digs up all this debris, and then forms these streaks called moraines on these glaciers, and then then it deposits, it carries all this stuff down and then deposits it at the end and then on the sides also. So this is the Colony Glacier. You can see the lateral moraines on the left side and then there's another one on the right. It looks like it's in the middle but it's actually on the right of this side of the glacier and you can see where the, the moraine debris has been deposited around that corner. It looks like for some time. And then the moraine, the lateral moraine on the right side of this glacier continues on and you can see there's a ridge in front of us, or in front of the plane, and there's another glacier on the, the other side of that with another glacier coming in and another lateral moraine on its left side. And those two meet and, and they form one single medial moraine. And then that follows the glacier down, and then this other moraine on this, uh, the other lateral moraine on the right side of this, you can see the debris that's been there for quite some time. And then you have a third glacier up here, so that lateral moraine on the right side of this one meets the left side of this next one, and all three of these glaciers merge, and then they have one big uh, medial moraine. And you can see where the debris has piled up, and that's where the receding, or where it kind of stalled. And it, it deposited that for some time, and then it made a pile, and then it continued on. Um, 
Not really sure where the location of that aircraft crash site is, but I know that it's around the right hand side of the toe of the glacier from this direction, which would be on the lateral side, the right lateral side coming down. So these, this medial moraine that is formed from these three glaciers all coming together eventually pushes over to the left and becomes this lateral moraine down here. So then it, it bends around this corner and it's almost like the gravity takes it and then pushes it off to the side uh, so it doesn't continue to be a, a, a medial moraine from this point. But you can see this ridge down here. Right there, that is a lateral moraine that has been there for thousands and thousands of years. And the glacier, of course, used to be that high, so it's receded, but it left that, that ridge there. So here we are at Lake George, which actually started my whole fascination with glacial moraines. Because I, I learned that the this lake is actually held in place by a glacial moraine from this glacier, the Colony Glacier, and then there's the Lake George Glacier that's actually receded all the way back. But when these glaciers reach the, a point and they stall, and then the debris starts to be deposited at, um, and it's just static for a while, it's stalled, and then the debris just continues to be deposited there from you know up up the glacier it becomes a terminal moraine and Lake George is actually formed from that so it's actually when the the glacier was sitting here depositing all of its debris it piled up and made a dam and that dam formed this lake and there's one little low spot in front and that's where the water escapes or is released from here and um, the rest of it is held in place by the, this glacial moraine which was a terminal moraine of these two glaciers and you can see that lateral moraine coming down at the end that is formed from that medial moraine that's a, a good shot good example of what a medial moraine is uh, formed by. So Lake George is formed by, like I said, uh, it was Lake George is formed by the terminal moraine of the Colony Glacier and the Lake George Glacier. And the Lake George Glacier has receded quite a bit or quite a distance from Lake George. And that glacier is right here in front of us and you can see that it's also formed its own little lake, uh, or at least the water is in a low area. Uh, but those piles of debris down there are the terminal moraines from it receding. And you can see that uh, lateral moraine uh, depositing just that really dirty looking ice and whatnot. So this area up here in front is actually uh, pretty interesting. So you have got the Colony Glacier over here on the right, and then you've got the Kinnick Glacier, which you can see that moraine right in the middle, uh, that medial moraine. And so this area in the middle and this and the dam, the moraine, terminal moraine dam that formed Lake George, that whole area is basically a glacial moraine. So when these two glaciers receded away from each other, it left this area here. And a lot of it, there's really humpy areas down here uh, that is all this glacial debris that when these two glaciers were together was just dumping all this stuff together. There was probably a huge medial moraine that came from both of these. And then when it deposited all the stuff, it was right here at the end or, you know, this location and it dumped all this stuff. And so it made all these kind of humps and hills and, and so on. And then made this kind of flat area in between. And 
This isn't a good textbook example of what a drumlin is, but drumlins are these kind of oval-shaped hills that are, are made, they're usually in the middle of nowhere, um, and they're just these mounds, and they are based basically these glacial the, the debris that have piled up and then receded and it left this pile and so that's what big humps are that's what I'm gonna call them I don't know and then I mentioned rock flower earlier and all of these areas all these kind of light tan colored areas um, are these it's really fine powdery soil or, or dirt or whatever and that's what that is is rock flower and you can see you can see kind of these streaks along the sides of the of these little mounds here and that's where the it used to flood back here so it used to at the water levels would fluctuate so you've got those kind of water rings and then there's the mud strip down here and it's actually made of that rock flower that becomes really rocky when it gets wet. This is Kinnick Glacier, which is a perfect example of all of the moraines. Well, it's about two miles west of You've got the, the lateral moraine over here on the left. And you can see it's just piled up for thousands of years over on here on the left. And then you've got the medial moraine right in the middle. You've got the right lateral moraine. And then you've got the glacier in front of us, and then the one off to the right, around the bend here to the right, that are forming from their two lateral moraines, that medial moraine. And you can see this lateral glacier, or lateral moraine, that eventually becomes lateral, is actually a medial moraine from this glacier, off to the right, and then the Kinnick Glacier. So there's these three glaciers that are converging right here, That's a perfect example of these two lateral moraines forming one single moraine that flows right straight down the middle of the Kinnick Glacier. I think it's interesting that the, you know, the, the moraines stay in their position even as the glacier wraps around and makes these corners. The valley is four point of the south side of the valley for the lodge, last call. And I'm seeing some absolutely huge boulders down there that are, I don't know, good 10 or 15 miles from the uh, Lake George. And so, you know, who knows how long those are going to take to get down there. So, this moraine right in front of us, or this glacier, is basically just one big glacial moraine at this point. And there's underlying ice down there but there's no like new new glacial ice being formed. It's just debris that's coming down. The grass top of the valley we find down Glacier Creek towards Metal Creek, low level. And then this is kind of the terminus or a ways up from the terminus of the uh, Marcus Baker Glacier. So you've got all of these moraines. So you've got you know, a couple laterals, a medial, so you've got you know all sorts of glaciers coming together up at the top, or at least two, uh, probably more, because I'm looking up and I, I can see some offshoots of other glaciers, so this looks like there's just all sorts of glacial activity coming into this one, just carrying all this debris down. I don't know why this fascinates me, but it does. So there you go. You learned about glaciers and glacial moraines, terminal moraines, lateral and medial moraines, plucking erratics, which are those big boulders that end up in the middle of nowhere, uh, drumlins, which are the mounds that are formed as a glacier recedes out in the middle of nowhere. So hopefully you got something out of it. If nothing else, I had fun doing it. So hope you enjoyed it.